Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, and I am truly blessed. I have uh, received an amazing gift from a friend in Australia named Chris Barker, and he got in touch with me, and we chat sometimes, but he said that he saw me say in a previous, maybe a live stream or a video, that I didn't really have any intentions of picking this figure up, because I already had a leather face in the collection. I have the Free Zero version on the end of the shelf down there. But he <laughs> insisted that I was getting this one. He said, I've got my copy, I'm getting you one. You, get, you have to have it in your collection, you gotta review it. And I am blown away, Chris, if you're watching, man, thank you so much, honestly. This is incredible, and I'm no stranger to generosity in the community. I've had over the years, since 2007, some truly touching and just amazing gestures from people in the community. Ruby's coming over to say hello. Hang on a minute, guys. Let's see, there she. I don't know, she's just getting comfortable. But honestly, folks, I have I have been blessed by you guys out there. Just the most selfless, generous acts. And thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I'll never forget you. And I'm just really, really honored. And thank you so much, Mr. Chris Barker, for sending this piece along. I haven't looked inside the box yet. I'm going to do an unboxing slash review for you. Go nice and in-depth and put him in poses. And maybe do a little comparison with the Free Zero version. But... I watched a few videos when I knew it was coming and started to get quite excited and it's good timing because you've got the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, is it a movie or a series coming up on Netflix? I think it's a movie. Now, originally I just assumed it was a series but I checked out the trailer today for the first time and it does seem to be a movie so I am looking forward to seeing that but this movie, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre is an absolute bona fide classic and inspired so much that came after it. But just one more time, man. Thank you, Chris Barker. Thank you, man. This is amazing that you would do this. Honestly, dude, thank you so much. Everyone in the comments who's excited to see this video, thank Chris in the comments. It's all down to him. Just an amazing dude. And just, I wish I could meet you in person, man, and shake your hand and say thank you. So just drop a like on the video, guys. Say thanks to Chris. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at Dean Knight Free Free for plenty of pictures from this video session. All right, let's get stuck in and unbox him. Before we do unbox him, let's take a look at this awesome packaging. I really do like the artwork. I love the size of the sideshow boxes. They're quite manageable for display. And I do prefer the artwork and the general look of this box to the Free Zero version box. So, an awesome picture of the figure itself there from the end of the movie. Just waving around that chainsaw. Really creepy looking mask. And the nice gritty look of the packaging as well. The iconic Texas Chainsaw Massacre there. I love the front though. And the back. That's quite a nice alternative background for when I display the piece. So every now and then I'll switch this around and to the front view or the back view. But very nice packaging. Leather face. All right, let's unbox him. I love the box. All right, so let's unbox this beast. Oh, I love that. It's nice the way with the sideshow figures for each individual character, you kind of get a nice personalized uh, cardboard kind of wrap around here. I remember the Michael Myers figure had a nice kitchen knife for Ransom, and Leatherface has his chainsaw blade with his name on it, and complete with blood spray. So, there he is. Let me just carefully remove. There we go. Oh, and the underside here. Oh, that has the base and the hands. Ow, oh, and the uh, the apron as well. And I like the way you can see the Texas Chainsaw Massacre font and logo on the base. Let's see the figure itself. The figure I thought I was never going to get. It's not that I ever thought anything bad about it. I just, I already had one leather face and I thought, you know, that's good enough for me. But so many people left comments saying that I needed to check this one out. And, man, Chris Barker saw to it. Took care of business there. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Oh, man, this looks incredible. It feels really good in hand. Really good quality. His eyes are catching the light inside the mask. He looks really creepy. He's excellent. Very, very nice. Love the feel of the suit and the tie looks really good. But that head sculpt is fantastic, and I love the sculpted hair. 
That was something I kind of struggled with on the 3.0 version. The uh, version was the real hair. Oh, and here's the alternative head sculpt. Really creepy looking, that one. Get a better look at that in a moment. The chainsaw. That looks excellent. And the hammer. It's nicely painted. And we've got the knife dagger here as well. It's quite small. All right, let's get all these bits out. But I am very impressed. All right, now here the figure is looking absolutely incredible. It's fresh out of the box, nothing done to him, just plonked on the base and he's standing there. And I'll tell you, just fresh, you know, first impressions right out of the gate. I feel like this could very well be the best 1-6 scale sideshow figure to date. I just, I'm not seeing any problems, but mind you, I'm no expert on Leatherface. I don't claim to be an expert on any character, really. But this seems to be just perfect, really. I don't see any anything that I would need to tweak in order to feel satisfied with the piece. I'm already satisfied. I just think this looks absolutely fantastic. I have in my collection from Sideshow the 1-6 scale Jason Voorhees, the 1-6 scale Ghostface, the 1-6 scale Freddy Krueger, and that is it from the Sideshow 1-6 scale side of things. But this, they all needed work. You know, they all needed little things, especially Freddy. He needed a fair bit of work. Ghostface was uh, equally kind of like this one, pretty much ready to go straight out of the box. You don't really need to do much to him. I did a tiny little mod on the Ghostface hood just to kind of get it to fall a bit more naturally. That's a minor thing. This one, I feel, is perfect pretty much out of the box. So give me uh, some time to have some fun during this review and I'll let you know my thoughts as we progress. But I really do feel this could very well be the best Sideshow Horror figure to date. Let me know if you agree with that in the comments, regardless of which character is your favorite. Just, you know, as far as a figure, you know, value for money and just expectations being met. I really do feel like this is pretty much a home run by Sideshow. And it's nice to see that because I'm usually complaining about things with them a lot. But I will give credit where it's due. This does seem to be an absolute home run. Now his hands are really nicely sculpted. These would be great for a Michael Myers figure to hold onto a knife because the hands look so aggressive. Nice bone and vein action. But really nicely sculpted. Look at the fingernails as well. That's really well done. Excellent paintwork on those. But I love the way you can see the eye looking out at you from inside the mask. I think there's pretty much a whole face under there. Because I was looking just now at this head. And there is a beard under there. And you can see... The beard continues inside, you've got the teeth, lips, and inside the mouth looks all wet and shiny. And you've got the eyes in here too. Let me just take it over to the light here. Yep, oh man, that is freaky. So there is probably a whole face under there, which I don't think I'm going to be able to see, but it's nice to know that it's there though. But that is a creepy looking head sculpt. It's so cool that you get two. But this one is my favorite. I really do like this piece, folks. I tell you, I am I am blown away so far. Let's get another look at this face under here. Oh. Mouth, the teeth, the beard again. Yeah, you can't see up inside it as much as the other one. But I really am digging the sculpted hair. When it's done right, it's like with the Myers figures from Tots. You know, as long as it's sculpted right, it's perfect because you don't have to keep messing around with the real hair all the time trying to style it and get it to look right. But this, that's just sculpted really well. Nice detail on that. Very pleased. All right, I had to put him holding onto the chainsaw as soon as possible. I just love the way this figure looks, man. I really, really do. I don't know if it's that new figure kind of excitement, but already I think I prefer this one to the 3-0. And I do really like the 3-0. It's got a hell of a presence it's really nasty looking this is a bit more clean you know I, I did bloody up my free zero one a little bit extra on the chainsaw and the apron he looks really quite gruesome but this one i don't know man i just love the proportions the head sculpt that freaky eye looking back at you the nice subtle weathering all over 
The chainsaw has been painted and sculpted really well. It's just a really satisfying piece to look at. And the history to it. The iconic kind of weight to this piece as well. All right, so let's take a look at the sideshow version next to the 3.0 version. Now, they're both from different points in the movie. The one on the left is the sideshow Pretty Woman version, and that's from the end of the movie. And the 3.0 version on the right is based on when we first see Leatherface in the film, and he, it's a very iconic moment where he bashes that dude over the head and drags him in, slams that door shut, and mayhem ensues. But it's a very... Very freaky looking figure, man. The mask from Free Zero is very scary. The face under that mask is really terrifying looking. The look in the eyes. It does have the real hair and they have done a little bit of a mod on the hair just to get it to come over the, the edge of the mask a bit more. Have it look a little bit more natural. And I do really like this piece. I did some weathering on the shirt and I did some extra blood on the apron and on the chainsaw. And the joints in the legs on this one are getting a bit loose. He has trouble standing on his own sometimes without a base or a stand. But I do love the arms. They're seamless arms. And you can see the veins in there and the skin tone's really quite good as well. So there's a big difference between the tie. And I, I guess they're supposed to be the same tie. I could be wrong. I mean, they obviously look very similar in design, but quite different as far as each company's interpretation of how that tie looked. I will do some homework in between takes here. When I stop filming this bit, I'm going to go on Google Image and see if I can track down a nice clear shot of that tie. And I'll come back to that topic in a minute. But yeah, you can't take anything away though from the Free Zero version. It is beefy, it is scary, and it is nice. Now, thank you, man, again to Chris Barker. Now I have both versions of Leatherface, and I never would have had it if it wasn't for him. Because I was satisfied enough with this one, but now having them both here, I totally get it. It's essential. Absolutely awesome to see these two standing side by side like this. So, yeah, <laughs> when I first got him out of the box, I was like, yeah, that's my favorite. I think this is one is uh, that one's better. And I still kind of feel like that. But now seeing them side by side, I got to tell you, it's a bit trickier to decide because I mean, I think that's a scarier looking mask. You know, I think that's a slightly more terrifying look. But I prefer the sculpted hair on this. And I like the, the makeup around the eyes and mouth. I think that's really twisted and freaky. And I love the proportions on this guy. I also like the proportions on him. I mean, he looks really beefy and intimidating. Man. It's a tough call. It really is. But I just wanted to show you them both side by side. Maybe we'll go a bit more in depth with this in a future video. But for now, I've very much got that new figure excitement going on with this one. So... Let's keep it focused on the figure we're reviewing here. But, yeah, height-wise, there seems to be a slight height advantage with the Free Zero version. Not much in it, but there, there is a little bit of extra height on him compared to the Sideshow one. All right, so as far as this mallet slash hammer, sorry, I don't know the exact technical, uh, technical name for this weapon, but um, the Sideshow one is the one on the left. And the three zero is the one on the right. And there is a slight scale. Well, not really a scale difference. Just a subtle little bit of a difference between the handle length, really. Um, basically the same size. So no problems there, I don't think. That seems fine. The three zero one one does seem to be a little bit more realistic looking on the wood handle. I think it's all plastic, but it does quite look like wood. There's a little bit of uh, gnarly blood. Just subtle, subtle bit of blood. Don't think the blood looks very good on there, but at least there is a little bit. But this is just a clean look on the sideshow one. You can always bloody that up yourself. Do what you need to do. That's the fun part. But it's cool as well because now I have a really bloody chainsaw with the Free Zero one and a much more clean chainsaw with the sideshow. There seems to be a little bit of a scale or a size difference between the two chainsaws. We'll get a look at that it was quite difficult to get him to hold on to it so i won't take it out of his hand just yet maybe i'll just turn him to the side and turn free zero to the side and see if we can get a look that way so yeah there's just it's not much actually the actual chainsaw blade on the free zero seems a little bit thicker 
than the sideshow one but the sideshow one has a bit more definition on the actual kind of razor blades that go around on the chainsaw and it is quite nicely weathered I think basically they're pretty much the same size um, really nice paintwork on both bit more weathering and blood spray on the three zero though I mean obviously I did bloody up this one a little bit more but a little bit more weathering on the three zero but I like them both I like the more clean one and the more bloody one it's nice to have the option now and I would always I, I think you pretty much can because you get the apron uh, here with the sideshow version as well uh, although the the apron does seem to be completely different as far as the pattern. I don't see that pattern anywhere on this Free Zero one. So you could take his jacket off and have him with the apron and kind of go for this sort of look. But I don't think the arms are as convincingly real on the Sideshow one from the review I saw. I definitely watched the review spot video and he, he showed the arms. And I didn't think they looked as good or as realistic as the Free Zero. So I would always rock him fully dressed like this and I'll keep this one as the iconic kind of first appearance of Leatherface look. But, you know, I wouldn't want to bend these arms too much because of the seamless skin, you know, with no visible joint in case it would take damage over time from posing it. But this one, because it doesn't have the seamless arm and it has a double bend elbow joint, you can have him going crazy with the chainsaw and holding it up and bending his elbows and maybe have this one in a bit more of a, you know, beastly just standing there. I mean, he doesn't need to do much to look intimidating. I mean, the blood helps. All right, let me go off and look on Google and see which one of these ties is the most accurate. All right, so we're just looking at some images on Google and I would lean slightly more towards the three zero tie because it's got that more stumpy look like this. It's not as long in a lot of the pictures I'm seeing. Um, and while the real tie, this kind of light blue streak that comes down here, it doesn't, I mean, it's hard to tell because the pictures I'm looking at are quite old looking, obviously. Uh, but sometimes it doesn't look quite this light blue, but the actual shape of that pattern and the kind of length of this tie and the thickness of the knot and where it sits and comes to right here, that does seem to be more accurate. Um, but then again, yeah, it's tricky. But maybe in this scene in the film at the end. Do you know what? I don't actually own any more. I did have the, check, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre on DVD years ago. I had a really nice special edition that came in like this really nice folded kind of nasty looking cardboard kind of box. And those were back in the days when trading in your games and DVDs at CEX. Uh, that's in the UK. It was a place where you could trade in your stuff to get money off new games and stuff. So me and my friends used to do that quite a lot. So foolishly, I, I traded in my Texas Chainsaw Massacre, so I will get it again on Blu-ray very soon because I definitely want to watch it again. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't take away anything from the sideshow tie either, but just from the images I'm seeing, specifically when he looks like this, uh, the tie does seem to be pretty damn accurate on the Free Zero. But like I said, at the end of the movie when he was in this look, that might be more how that looked. And I have to say, man, watching that end scene again, uh, Marilyn Burns, who played Sally, I think that's one of probably the best uh, performance in a horror movie from any actor conveying real fear that you genuinely believe. It's really incredible. I, I think I mentioned it in the Hot Toys Ellen Ripley alien figure review. Um, Sigourney Weaver in the end of Alien, where she's alone with the alien, the way she turns her back and she starts singing that Lucky Star song. and Just really amazing acting. You really believe the fear. And you certainly even more so believe it with Marilyn Burns as Sally in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Just an amazing performance. And I think she's coming back. I only watched the new trailer for the Netflix movie once. But I think, is that really her? Marilyn Burns coming back? The original uh, final girl, I guess you call it. Man. So I'm looking forward to seeing that film. But yeah, I love both of these. These are incredible. And I just wanted to try the other sideshow head that you get on the free zero body um yeah i wouldn't do this personally but i just wanted to show you what it looks like it's not really attached on there properly it's just kind of sitting on the neck but that's what that looks like in case you were wondering 
Now I just wanted to try and recreate that iconic pose where you saw it on a lot of the film posters where he's kind of running towards you the pathway that leads up to their house and I couldn't get a good look at his legs in that picture it's kind of only from about here but I got the tie kind of sweeping off to the side like it is in that image I've got him holding on to the chainsaw the way he seemed to be and it is absolutely terrifying to imagine that thing chasing after you with that chainsaw just revving away try and capture that moment where he was very frustrated and swinging around that chainsaw and Sally got away in the back of that truck. I mean there's a whole bunch of different ways you could kind of pose him to get that look across. I've just done it quickly for you here. But good articulation in the arms and he's holding his arm up well. No loose floppy joints which is always good and that's not always the case for Sideshow Jason his arms are quite floppy. And the sideshow Freddy, his torso was quite floppy and he kept kind of flopping forward. But this one, I mean the fat suit's probably helping with the torso because he has got like padding on to give him more bulk. But the arms, the wrists, the elbows, the shoulder joint seem to be nice and stiff and holding that pose. Now this isn't too much of a pose but it's subtle. I don't know, it's just him kind of just walking in a kind of weird disfigured kind of way with the chainsaw just by his side. I like the way it looks. All right, now we've got the figure on a rotating base and we're gonna appreciate all the details as he comes around. Then I'll put him in a few different poses for you. I really like this one. This is the one I just had him in and he's still in it because there's something about this one that's quite unnerving. It's very simple, there's not much to the pose at all really, but I really do like it. And I gotta tell you, it's a nice feeling to be reviewing a sideshow figure that I'm not pointing out things I'm frustrated with all the time. Like I said earlier, I really do think this is their best one six scale horror figure to date that I've seen in person. And what better one to get right than one of the original horror icons. So well done sideshow. Not that anyone from sideshow will see this video, but if anyone happened to, then it's just a real nice feeling to see you guys do such a good job on a one six scale horror icon. And Ghostface was fantastic as well. Uh, Michael Myers could have been great, but the head sculpt, I just wasn't a big fan of it. Great coveralls, great accessories, but yeah, I had my issues with that one too. But this one, I gotta tell you, I think it's pretty much perfect. And I will bring you a new video about the horror icons on the shelf up there. Now, you know, I got Pennywise recently from Hot Toys and I did the mods on him to get him more movie accurate. So check out those videos if you haven't seen them. And I also recently got the Art the Clown figure from Trick or Treat Studios. I got two of those, one to have completely clean and another one to make really bloody. So check out those videos on the channel as well. So now we have a new addition, thanks to Chris. So I will have to make some more space and I will get this guy set up on the shelf of horror icons and I look forward to bringing you that video too. So look out for that. It's just the reason I kind of take it a little bit, not personal, but the reason when Sideshow do kind of miss the mark a little bit with some of the ones that scale horror icons, I would love the company. I mean, they produced the, the life-size Endo Skull from T2 and I have that and it's I think it's made from the molds from the actual endoskull uh, or endoskeleton from T2 it's perfect it's one of the most incredible things I have in my collection and you know Stan Winston Studios has always had pretty close links with um, Sideshow Collectibles from what I understand I mean their original pumpkin head premium format I think Stan Winston uh, actually was very hands-on with reproducing that well not hands-on but was there and you know advised them and approved it and stuff like that so I love Stan Winston and Stan Winston Studios, um, it's all quite weirdly incestuous, like my favourite band is Tool and the guitarist from Tool, Adam Jones, used to work for Stan Winston Studios and worked on Jurassic Park and T2 and Nightmare on Elm Street uh, 3 I think and a whole bunch of other stuff. So I have always loved um, you know, the work of Stan Winston and all the guys who work at Stan Winston Studios and therefore was always felt quite a, a link with Sideshow because of their work reproducing predators and alien stuff and terminator so i'm just really glad 
that they have absolutely killed this one. So well done to Sideshow. It is good to see you guys doing some sick work on 1-6 scale figures. Not that this is the first time you've done sick work on 1-6 scale figures. You've done plenty of great figures. But I am just so relieved that you guys killed this one because you really did. It's a great looking piece. Very satisfying. Look at the weathering on the jacket as well, down the uh, between the shoulder blades and around the shoulders there. You can see all the weathering. Nicely done. You know, they could have skipped that, but they didn't. Some nice, subtle weathering all around the pockets. And at the back here, see around the shoulder, see between the shoulder blades going down the middle. Very nicely done. Now, I don't want to be distasteful and advertise shops on a video where, you know, I receive something as a really generous gift from someone in the community. But I do get a lot of questions in my reviews, specifically the reviews. Um, people will ask in the comments, where do I buy this figure? Because we have to remember not a lot of people in the community. Well, not everyone in the community of collectors is as well versed as some of us are when it comes to where to buy these things. So I'm not too sure if SideshowCollectibles.com has still have this in stock. Uh, they may very well do. But I do know for a fact, because I saw on Instagram in a recent post, that my favourite place to get my horror stuff, madabouthorror.co.uk, they do have this guy in stock. They've got a few of them, maybe more than a few. So in case you are wondering where to pick them up, they do ship worldwide. They are very reliable. I swear by them myself. So if you are keen to pick him up, and you damn well should be, don't do what I did and sleep on this piece. Thank you again, Chris Barker, for waking me the hell up. All right, just changed it to a two-hand hold on the chainsaw. Nothing too dramatic going on here. Dynamic, should I say. Let's just appreciate the detail on this as it comes round. Very nice. Got the back of that hair. You've even got a little hole in the shoulder there from the seams of things. See the beard underneath the mask. There's Ruby again. She's sleepy. Oh, Sleepy bear. Tiny wolf. Smelly bear. <laughs> little fluffy little thing. She's so funny. She's getting on a bit now, guys. Old Rubster. Not sure exactly how old she is, to be honest. I got her when she was seven. And now she's about... Well, about 14. Look at those beautiful eyes. Gorgeous. Gorgeous smelly dog. Who's a good girl? Yes. <laughs> Can I get back to my review now? <laughs> She's so sweet. Oh, there's my NECA top 20 countdown list. You can see how many amendments I had to make. Kept changing my mind about things. <laughs> you see Harley Quinn scribbled over whatever number 15 originally was. Um, right. But yeah, holding on to the chainsaw. Looking awesome. All right, so now I'm going to change it over to the other look with the other head sculpt and the apron on, and we'll see what that looks like. All right, so let's just take a look at these arms. So they're not too bad. I mean, obviously, there's, you know, very obvious joints there, and when you bend that elbow, uh, that will become even more obvious to look at, quite unsightly, you know. But I would, I would definitely display him with his jacket on, and I would use... The 301. God, that looks terrifying. He is a great piece, man. Don't get me wrong. That 30 figure is not to be messed with. Look at him just standing there. Bloody terrifying. Um, so yeah. It doesn't bother me too much. I mean, at least with this one, there's no worries about damaging fake skin or any of that stuff. It's uh you know, it's it's a hard plastic with a double bend elbow. You know, could be better, but just for peace of mind, I think. 
Okay, so that's a completely different look. And that head sculpt is genuinely creepy. <laughs> and it's more of a female look to this one. i got to be honest with you, like I said, I really need to revisit the movie. It has been some years have gone by since I last watched it. Um, and I'm not remembering exactly what scene this was from, so you have to forgive me on that one. But it is very creepy looking. And the arms don't bother me too much at all, because I would, like I said, I'll always rock this one with the jacket on. And it's nice to know that when I bend the elbows, nothing's going to get damaged. But very nice. And very creepy. Proportions look pretty damn good. I did a bit of a rush job, just tying a little knot in the back of that. You can definitely do better than I did. It's just to show you what the apron looks like. See those veins in the arm, pretty prominent. Quite obvious elbow joints, but what are you going to do? It's fine. So let's, let's take you off here. Bring you back over, sir. So we got two very similar looks going. So that's how that looks. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Always enjoy hearing from you guys. I mean, on this particular subject matter, I'm pretty sure there's a hell of a lot of people out there who know more than me. So don't be afraid to chime in. I just noticed this beautiful stitching and patterns inside his jacket here. Really nice. They didn't have to do that. That was uh, the extra mile. That's what I'm talking about. Very, very nice. And like I said before, the weathering on this is very nicely done. All right, now we'll take a look at both these heads on a rotating base. Check out all the details. I love the way the hair's been sculpted, I love the stitching on the skin mask and the way the makeup transitions into that skin on the mask. Nice paint transitions. And very creepy to see those eyes as they catch the light looking out at you. And you've got the bit of string on the side there as well. And there's the teeth and the lips. It's an amazing sculpt and it really is. Excellent work. Let it come round. One more time. Gruesome. Very, very well done. All right, let's just swap it over to the alternative head. Although that kind of leans back a bit when you rest it like this it's not really the best angle but that will have to do folks definitely prefer the first sculpt we looked at this one definitely prefer this but it is excellent that you get this one too oh god that just looks terrifying i'll just raise the camera up a little bit try and get a higher angle on this one just want to try and catch the, the teeth inside the mask. Maybe you can see if we can catch the eyes. I don't think we got the right angle for the eyes, but we can see the teeth a little bit there. It's really haunting this one. I am using a fist, as you can see, <laughs> to get the head to sit a little bit more upright, but still leaning back a fair bit. Just give you a quick look at his boots, which are really nicely done. Very well sculpted and very well painted and weathered. So great work on the boots. All right, folks, it's time to wrap up the review and give you my final thoughts and a score out of 10. Now, I've been sitting here thinking about it for a while and I see no reason not to give this figure a 10 out of 10. I honestly think it's fantastic. I would definitely recommend it to you. I feel like a fool for sleeping on it and not getting one sooner but thank you again massive massive thank you to Chris Barker 
for remedying that situation and sending one my way. That was so cool of you, man. Thank you. I can't thank you enough. Words aren't going to do it. But just know that I truly, truly appreciate what you did, Chris. And I always will. And I'm always going to treasure this piece in my collection. I'm so glad to have it. It is amazing. 10 out of 10. I really can't see any reason why not. I love the head sculpts. The clothing's fantastic. The proportions of the body are fantastic. The posability is excellent. And everything is done so well. You know I love my boxes and I love the box art on this and I like the way the base has the the Texas Chainsaw Massacre written there and even a little bit of Leatherface there as well. It all looks very official so I can, you know, just recommend this figure man seriously don't sleep on it like I did. Thank you again Chris. Drop a like on this video folks subscribe to the channel. I've got a new Hot Toys figure inbound tomorrow which I will be reviewing I really can't wait to show it to you. And see if you can guess what it is in the comments. It's uh, you know it's quite a, a large range of things it could be, but I'll be curious to see if anyone gets it. But I'll be showing you that on the channel really soon. Absolutely excellent work by Sideshow. Definitely recommend you pick up this piece. Thank you again, Chris. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you all for being such a wonderful community. And making it so fun to do these videos and share stuff with you guys out there. It's an absolute pleasure. I'll see you real soon. Take it easy.